What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So it's that time of the week and dare I say, based on some of the fragrances I wore this week, this might be the ultimate weekly rotation video that you'll see this week. I uh, don't say that from a conceited range, I just mean from the variety, the sheer variety with some, of fr some fragrances that are touted as some of the greatest DNAs ever created, some brand new releases that are just fantastic, and just some very underrated gems on top of that. There's quite the variety great stuff in this rotation and it's week number 181 so stay tuned and with this rotation on sunday we're going to start with two that are very underappreciated that are very original dnas just great to smell, starting with Gucci Guilty Cologne. This does not get the appreciation that it deserves. This is a very interesting juniper, fresh green, slightly powdery, light minty tone. This is a strange one, such a strange fragrance. But it's kind of a cult classic kind of fragrance because there are... There, there, are, there is a small amount of people that create a fan base for this fragrance. The masses, not necessarily a fragrance for the masses, but when it comes to springtime especially, and even in the summertime, this is one of the more unique smelling freshies that evoke a certain feeling and a certain type of confidence that maybe you won't get from other scent profiles because this one, while I wouldn't call it daring, I would definitely call it outside of the norm. Not so much a challenge, just different, outside of the beaten paths, thinking outside the box for creating a freshie, and that's something I really appreciate from Gucci. And performance is actually decent, too. This is Gucci Guilty Cologne. And then we got the shower. It was time for a shave, so I reached for my Zaharoff Signature Citrine Shave Set, as well as gave myself a few sprays of the fragrance. So with this one, it's a sweet orange, limey, clem clementine type of opening. The frankincense in here really pops on my skin. It has a smoky tone, light essence in the backdrop that starts to come out more and more as it dries. With this warm, ambery, slightly kind of marine, aquatic saltiness without having a watery type of feel to it. A little bit of a salty kind of amber, if you will, with some woods and such. It's a lovely fragrance. This is, in my opinion, the best smelling fragrance from Zaharoff, but because it's not a performance monster, it doesn't get its just due. This is an incredible scent profile that definitely needs heat. It's a true freshie at its core, so to get the full experience, it's short-lived. If you get a few hours, respray in a few hours. I tend to get decent performance, six, seven hour range and longevity, but admittedly, it's sitting close to the skin after an hour if I'm not outdoors or doing something to create some my body temperature rising to really generate some body heat, then it'll start projecting like crazy. But this is one that definitely begs you to get moving. This is a in motion type of scent profile, if you will, and super underappreciated. Out the shower, had a good shave. It was a horror off, a signature stream. Moving into Monday, this is one that was sent to me by my good friend Neeb at the channel Aromatics, and I didn't realize how much I was going to like this because it's such a pink pepper sandalwood bomb. Super versatile, very dense sillage. It just smells incredible. Versatility is key here with just rich, incredible quality with the raw materials used. This is from Lulu at Al Musk. This is from the Violet Collection. This is V05. That's what this one's called. You can see it etched in the glass under the plate V05. This stuff, man, if you like pink pepper, this is a must try for you. Loaded full of it, this bright aromatic sweetness that's not fruity. I'd like when I, it first hit me, I was like, there's a sweetness here, but I can't pinpoint it. It's not like a creamy gourmandish sweetness. It's not fruity. And then I saw the notes and I was like, pink pepper. Wow, that makes so much sense when you find out there's pink pepper in here. It's basically a pink pepper bomb with some creamy sandalwood. And there's other notes there, but that's the two most dominant factors in this scent profile and I'm a fan. It was the first one of the three that he sent me. It's the first one that I just had to put in my rotation immediately. I wore it the following day after doing an unboxing and first impressions and performance was very good in the eight, nine hour range in longevity. Not a real monster in projection, but the sillage left a density where I could smell myself pretty easily throughout the entirety of my day. This is definitely one worth trying from the house, I have to say. During the day, 
un, kind of unknown. This is Lulu at El Musk in their Violet Collection. This is V05. Then I got the shower. I wore this one a lot this week out the shower. This is fun. This is kind of under the radar when it comes to cheap freshies. This is Kenneth Cole, Mankind Unlimited. I've been talking about this one a lot lately. Shout outs to my buddy Chad from the channel, A Gentleman's Journey, for putting me on this one. He suggested it so we could do a collaboration review on his channel, which I already gave him the footage. Not sure when the video is coming out, but I've sure been talking about it a lot on this channel. It's a very zesty, watery orange. So you get spicy orange. There's a variety. There's mandarin, um, and I forgot what other type of orange. There's three types of orange total in the note breakdown with some aquatic notes, a bright spiciness, and then a, a pretty dense woody backbone. Doesn't overcome too much as a woody fragrance, but definitely a nice woody facet to this one. You could spray it heavy. You can bathe in this one. I keep The way I keep describing it is picture a fun, casual summer's day going to the water park. That's kind of the feeling, the vibe, the atmosphere that I get from this fragrance. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's not the most original freshie of all time, but it also doesn't remind me of a bunch of other things. Decent performer, nothing spectacular, four to five hour type of thing in longevity. And it's not going to grab somebody from across the room unless you just have phenomenal skin chemistry with this one. But I got to tell you, for the $30 range, $25, $30 range that you can get this 100 ml for, I think it could be a great addition to your summer wardrobe, and I've been thoroughly impressed with it. You're going to see it pop up in a few more segments in this video. Out the shower, Kenneth Cole, Mankind Unlimited. Moving into Tuesday, both fragrances I chose this particular day are two touted as two of the greatest scent profiles ever created. And it's hard to argue against that because they're just so good, starting with Creed Aventus. You know, say what you want. People love this fragrance. It's been dubbed the king, though I still think Aqua de Joe, the original, is technically the king because if we look at sales numbers, that's the one. But as far as sheer sales numbers, according to luxury market, the luxury fragrance market, yeah, this is definitely the king of that. And every time I spray this one in the air, like in my scent of the day video that I did, I was like, man, that was like a dollar to just waste that spray in the air. I don't care. Ball out, right? God, this is a good fragrance. Heavily, 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 ridiculously replicated at this point. Now, admittedly, there are niche houses that have done their take on this scent profile that I do like a little bit more than Creed Aventus, but I do thoroughly enjoy the wearing every time I go back to this one. For anybody that's going to ask, this is a 19S11 batch because batch codes are a thing with Creed Aventus. I typically don't play the batch code game, but I know with Creed Aventus... If there's ever a fragrance that I'm 100% going to get asked about in the comments, it's this one. Um, very fruity. The smokiness isn't overdone here. There's a nice musky tone from the ambergris. I don't get a lot of florals. It's not heavily sweet, uh, but there is a nice citric fruity tone at the top. Like I said, a little bit of darkness. And I do get a little bit of the moss in this one. There's a little bit of an earthy tone to it. But performance is decent on my skin. Six to eight hour range with this one. Typically right in the middle is the sweet spot for me. About seven hours of longevity on my skin, which I'm cool with. The sillage on this one's actually pretty nice. It's not a room filling batch of Creed Aventus. It does project pretty well in the first hour, hour and a half. Admittedly, it does grab attention. But the sillage that's left after is more on the moderate side. This one will linger in the air. Like I said, iconic mega versatile it's kind of in some ways the rolex of the fragrance world um some people strive to get a bottle of this it's kind of a status type of fragrance not that that's important in the grand scheme of things but i'm just calling it how i see it um and it's absolutely an experience worth having for every take twist clone inspiration of this fragrance there's a ton of good ones out there there's a ton of great ones out there too but you got to try the original. You have to try the original just once at least to get the experience to really understand what it's all about. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's the fragrance missing from your wardrobe. But there is one thing that's it's it's polarizing. It's popular. It's loved. It's hated. It's all those things. It's Creed Aventus. And then I got at the shower. Um, this was known as like the most affordable way to smell like Creed's original vetiver for a long time. Speaking of Creed, this is Mugler Cologne. Now, this is an older bottle. This is back when it was still called Terry Mugler, Mugler Cologne. Uh, this is part of an old gift set that I got. I don't know. Uh, the batch code's too old for me to know on CheckFresh.com uh, which, which year this batch is from, but it's beyond 10 years. I can tell you that because it, the batch code doesn't go back any further. So, zesty bergamot 
bright greens from the pedigree. It's herbal. It's woody. It's soapy from this Neroli note. It is magnificent. Very professional. One of the best clean soapy fragrances of all time. If not the greatest clean soapy DNA ever. It's, it's weird that two of the, the icons, the two icons really, that are in this video happen to be on the same day. Now, I haven't tried newer versions of Mugler Cologne. I'm sure it's not much different from these older batches, um, but you can enjoy this one. It works for anything and everything. It's great in a professional setting, great clean fragrance for everyday wear in an office space, suit and tie, you name it. Casual t-shirt fragrance, doesn't matter. Even the dead cold of, of winter, if you just want fresh and clean, there's not too many that will evoke that vibe, that feeling, that uplifting aspect of a fresh, clean scent profile. Out the shower, Terry Mugler, Mugler Cologne. Moving into Wednesday, I just dropped a full review of this one. Very impressed by it. I've seen Blue de Chanel meets Invictus, which I think that's fair. I've heard Scandal with a bit of Blue de Chanel, which I also think that's fair because the sweetness I get from this kind of reminds me a little bit of Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal, but this is Cadlage Chiaca Blue. Pretty good performer, not a monster. Smells great, though. If you want a more sweet take on a blue fragrance, you might want to check this one out. Because it's not a direct clone of any one thing. It's a hybrid scent profile, if anything. Like I said, I've seen people say Blue de Chanel mixed with Invictus, which can't argue that. I've seen Blue de Chanel mixed with Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal, like I was saying. That's the one I kind of relate it to the most. Um, kind of the best of both worlds there with the citrus and the the ginger and so on and this underlying sweetness. There's a floral heart here that doesn't dominate the fragrance. Uh, it's good stuff. If you want some more information beyond this, definitely check out my full review on it. You would be surprised for the affordability of, of what you're going to pay for this. The quality is good. The performance is good. It's a unique bottle. You know, definitely a unique bottle. I don't mean that in a good or a bad way. It's just, it's its own thing. Definitely like the blue color though, I have to say. During the day, Cadlage Shiaka Blue. When I got the shower, it's segment number two featuring Kenneth Cole, Mankind Unlimited. So I said everything I needed to in the previous segment, so we'll just do a quick passerby that I wore this out the shower. Moving into Thursday is a brand new release from one of my favorite designer houses and one of my favorite designer lines. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Elixir. Just did a full review on this one as well. I think this is one of the best releases so far this year, especially from the designer market. This is lovely, it's woody, it's spicy, it's a gourmandish type of sweetness. There's a, a tobacco earthy facet here that I detect, so that's it's rare that I agree with Fragrantica being the more accurate uh, note breakdown, but I do get this earthiness that mixed with that honey and vanilla accord kind of creates a chocolatey sweetness a little bit on my skin. There's a spice that's not overdone. It's sweet, but not sickeningly sweet. It's more delicious and delectable. It's a monster performer. Um, it's just one that I believe a lot of people are going to really enjoy. It's not going to be for everyone. Not everybody likes every fragrance, but I think the overwhelming majority is going to be bit, are going to be big fans of this one. This is as I expected it to be. Very, very, very good. I uh, picked up this 75 ml on eBay. It's not at the recording of this yet available from retailers in the States. I even went to Jean-Paul Gaultier's website looking to buy it from them initially. Uh, and in the States, it wouldn't allow me to. Found it on eBay for retail plus shipping. And I'm super happy with it. Again, when you guys can get your nose on this one, I would encourage you to do so. Here goes a bite flying by. Never fails when I'm recording. Uh, but definitely check this one out. If you want a beast gourmand that still smells like Lamal, that lavender vanilla minty tone is still in here. It does smell like Lamal. That's the most important thing to me when you're going to create flankers. Tie it to the original DNA. And they definitely did that here. Jean-Paul Gaultier's Lamal Elixir. And now we got the shower. Surprise, surprise. Another segment in this video for Kenneth Cole Mankind Unlimited. Out the shower. Moving into Friday, so this is a brand new release from one of my favorite designer leather goods houses. Uh, they make great, my wife's had a bunch of purses from them, I have a wallet from them. I'm a big fan of the brand Coach, and this is in the Coach for Men line, this is Coach for Men Green. So the easiest way to explain this one is it's kind of like Parfums de Marley Greenly and Dior Sauvage had a baby. Because it has this green, fruity, woody tone at the top, and it starts to settle into a slightly green and woody... Ambroxan smelling type of 
dry down, so it smells a little bit like Sauvage, which admittedly the Platinum Flanker, Flanker has a tie to Sauvage. It smells like a sweeter Sauvage. Coach for Men has a little bit of that Sauvage feel to it, the original, so I'm not surprised by that. Uh, I did do a full review on this one if you want more details beyond what you're going to get here, performance and such. Uh, definitely go check out that video. But this was one that popped up from FragranceNet for $47 for a tester after their 37% off discount codes. It came in a brown tester box. There is the tester label on the back with some of the main accords. Uh, this is a nice fragrance. Spoiler, it's mass appealing. It's a crowd pleaser. People are going to like this, but it's not going to blow anybody's mind. But it is a solid release. I have to say, in this particular line, I think it's a welcomed addition. Um, they had their super fresh citric blue fragrance. They had their versatile all-around fragrance. They had their sweeter fragrance. Now they have their more herbaceous and woody fruity fragrance that I'm going to get a lot of wear out, wear out of this summer. I think this was a good addition. During the day, Coach for Men Green. Then when I got out the shower, this is one of my favorite cheapy discoveries of the year. Shout out to my buddy Joey Cannoli for turning me on to this one. It's Calvin Klein CK All. Bright, zesty, invigorating, vibrant citrus at the top with a fresh yet creamy white floral heart that doesn't make it lean too feminine. The white bottle is very fitting. It doesn't come across as blue or green. What I mean, it's not herbaceous. It's not aquatic and oceanic and watery, but it is citric at the top. This could have been a CK1 summer flanker, but this performs a little bit better. I've been getting about four to five hours, hour and a half projection, which is superior to the CK1 summer flankers. I typically get two to three hours out of those with maybe, you know, 30 to 45 minutes of pretty good projection with those. They're bright, fresh. They're meant to be sprayed over and over. Here, you don't have to spray as much. You can still bathe in this one if you want to. You're not going to offend anybody. It's a great couple's fragrance. You and your, your lady can both enjoy this one. Lady, any ladies watching this, you would absolutely enjoy this fragrance. It's all-inclusive, hence the name, CK All. This is a fragrance for everyone. It doesn't smell too juvenile to be more youthful. It doesn't smell mature to be more for the older crowd. There's literally not one person I don't think could get some joy out of this fragrance. They're popping up at the rack stores, especially Raw Stress for Less, for $19.99. We're going to give this one a spray. One of the best pickups of the year for me personally that I would encourage you to roll the dice on. This is worth a dice roll for 20 bucks. 30 bucks will get you a 200 ml. Those pop up too. But out the shower, Calvin Klein, CK All. Finally on Saturday is one of the newest releases from one of my favorite cheapy summer fragrance brands. So the brand as a whole is Island Vibes Relaxing Beach Vacation. We're talking Tommy Bahama here. And this is part of the Maritime line. This is Tommy Bahama Maritime Voyage. This is under the radar. This is not getting the kind of attention I think it deserves. It has a tropical feel. It uses that starfruit note that's most famously used in Versace Mano Fresh without the smell like Versace Mano Fresh because there's a creaminess here from this Elemy resin, but it still offers this citric, grassy green feel. I believe there's a lemongrass note in here. Uh, it's really lovely. Decent performer, nothing spectacular. Four or five hours on skin is what I've been experiencing. It is an eau de cologne concentration. So that's actually really good performance for being an EDC concentration. This is worth checking out. 30 some odd dollar range for this 4.2 ounce bottle. You can spray it heavy. You can respray as needed. Um, it's quite the, I think it's the best version, honestly, with deep blue falling to a close second and then triumph falling into third place. I mean, they're all good in this line, Maritime, Maritime Journey. All five of them are good, but I think this stands a tall, stands tall on top of the mountain, basically, because, I don't know, it just speaks to me more so than the others. It doesn't smell too close to any one fragrance, whereas the rest of them kind of relate to other fragrances. This one doesn't really remind me of any one specific other fresh designer fragrance. There's elements of different things. Like I said, there's elements of Mano Fresh, but it doesn't smell like Mano Fresh. It's way too creamy for that because of the Elemy. This is good stuff. Flying under the radar, you should try this. It's Tommy Bahama Maritime Voyage. Then we got the shower. I want to let you guys know I did see this 4.2 ounce bottle for 20 bucks at Raw Stress for Less yesterday at the recording of this. So they're popping up for 20 bucks. I paid 30 some odd dollars, 36, 37, 34, somewhere around there, mid 30s. And I was cool with that price, but. If you can find Ralph Lauren's Polo Sport Fresh for 20 bucks at the rack stores, I think this is a safe blind buy as well. So the fragrance I can relate this to most, any of you that have experience with Polo Blue Sport, that minty green feel is here. 
The opening is similar, but this is a more soapy clean fragrance overall because of the iris note used here offers more of a soapy clean tone than it does anything waxy, doesn't smell like makeup or lipstick, it doesn't have a hefty powdery tone, there's a light powdery nuance uh, with a soft musk as well. Not a great performer, again like a four hour fragrance here, but it's very lively and clean at the same time. This is so good. Literally at the recording of this, I wore this last night out the shower. This is so good, and I like it so much, I literally debated on grabbing that $20 bottle that I saw as a backup, but then I'd have 8.4 ounces of this fragrance, and I can't imagine if I'll ever go through that much, uh, but I gotta say, that's how much of a steal that is for 20 bucks at the rack stores, and you can find it online for around 30 some odd, which I think that's a great price point in itself. Definitely worthy of checking out. Flying under the radar, again, nothing special, it's a fresh, clean fragrance that is kind of similar to a previous release from the house, but it offers something a little bit different with that soapy iris. Out the shower was Ralph Lauren Polo Sport Fresh. Well, that was this week's rotation, and until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. What'd you guys wear this week? Definitely sound off in the comments down below. I love reading those comments to see what you guys have been spraying. Did you happen to wear any of the stuff I wore this week? This was a great rotation. I mean, it's always a really good rotation, but here there's just some iconic fragrances, some new releases that I really like, some underappreciated stuff that I really like, and so on. Like I said, real, some real versatility. It like, uh, insert how you would define versatility here, and it's probably going to fit that, that narrative. You know, there's, there's so much to offer in this particular rotation. It was great. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances I wore this past week, you give them a spray now. You'll probably end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.